In this step, we're going to take a look at using IPR, or Interactive Photorealistic Rendering, for Arnold, which is a really good way to work, I think anyway, and it allows you to make changes and see the results almost instantly, which can be brilliant. So, in order to open it in a separate window, you go up to your Arnold settings up here, and there is Open Arnold Render View. So we'll click that, and it opens as a separate window. I'm just going to make this a bit smaller. There we go. So we're just going to drop it down here for now. There you go. You see that the shape of this is respecting the size of our window that we set it to when we went into the render settings. So that's a good sign. And I want to show you how this works. It will be very dependent how well it performs on what kind of processor or GPU you have. I've got a fairly good one, so my rendering is not too bad. But if you're on a low-end computer, this might be quite difficult to work with. Anyway, once you've got the window open, click on this little red play icon there. And that will start rendering what can be seen in here you see that that's happening pretty quickly and it renders out sort of in a circle and over time the image gets clearer that's done then it took 19 seconds for me and now that we've got this light you've got these little render artifacts here that are <laughs> they're called in the industry fireflies and it just means that we've got to later in the rendering process turn up the samples to get those to disappear it's because we've got a very small bright light source in the scene Whenever you get that, lots of contrast, it can just create this sort of little issue. Anyway, what's good about this is that this is interactive. So now if I make any changes to my scene, so let's just, I've got my light selected. If I move it over here, you can see in the bottom corner that it's happening at a low resolution, but it's re-rendering all the time to show what changes are being made to my scene. So if I now drop it towards the other candle, it will just pick up and start rendering there. But I don't want that one there, so I'm going to do... Control and Z to undo, put the light back, and that will start rendering. And now what I can do is, let's say I want to zoom in and see what this is doing to the shadows. And getting real close, and it's rendering for me all the time. I want to get in really close on these shadows. And then we'll give it a second, because I don't want this shadow to be too perfectly round. And at the moment, it is. I'm not a massive fan of that. So let's increase the radius of this light. Oh, that's too far. And again, I can use the interactive renderer here to see how much of an effect it's having. So that's now casting a much softer shadow. Let's try 0.1. You can see that by changing that, the light is now coming in much smoother. The shadow, rather, is coming in much smoother. Now that I'm fairly happy with that then, what I'm going to do is just press stop here so that it will stop rendering the scene in the background. And I want to just duplicate this light here and put it in place over on the other candle. So I'm going to do Control D, move it over here. I'm going to use my orthographic views to make sure it's in place. That's pretty nice. Yep, that looks good. Okay, and now with both lights in place, I want to render this. But before I do it, I'm going to show you one more thing. This that is rendering in this window is not the same as what is rendering here because this is fixed to an aspect ratio. This isn't, so we can make this view tall and thin or long and fat. So to see exactly what's going to be rendered in your render view, you can turn on something called a resolution gate or a camera gate. So if you go to view and camera settings, you can choose a resolution gate. And this rectangle here now is everything that's going to be rendered over here. So what I'll do is just put this frame up in a way that I like. That'll do it for now. And then we can hit play on here again and this will render exactly as I want it to. And at this stage now, things are starting to look pretty nice. So I've got my two main sources of light being the candles, and that's now giving me some nice highlights on the flasks. It's coming together pretty nicely. That's gonna do it for this step then. I'm just gonna stop my IPR rendering. In the next step, we're actually gonna do the candles again, but we're gonna do a slightly more advanced light. So we're gonna take the meshes that we created for the flames, and turn those into lights. So I'll see you in the next step to see how we do that. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.